Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be working on polishing this big piece of unikite. And the, the goal here is to, outside here, hit it with this angle grinder. This is just a regular dry angle grinder. This is called a uh, diamond cup wheel. Um, got this at Harbor Freight. Uh, and it's done really well for me over the years. Uh, I'm going to grind away on this. And the first thing I'm going to do is just knock down the high spots here. So there's a big dent in it right there. Uh, that won't come out very well in the tumbler, but if I take off these two spots here, uh, then the, the tumbler can work on the inside parts there. So I'm just going to kind of rough this in. I'm a little concerned about how high this epidote is, the green part's epidote, and this is feldspar. Epidote polishes much nicer in the tumbler than the feldspar does. So if you can see that ridge along there, um, you can tell it's, it's harder because of that. Uh, so I'm hoping that this feldspar does okay in the tumbler. Sometimes it undercuts a little bit, um, but we're going to give it a try and see what happens. So I'm going to knock that down with that. Uh, after I use that, the next thing I'll use is this. Now this has water hooked up. This is a much more expensive uh, tool. This is like 300 bucks. This is like 60 or something. Uh, I don't remember. I got this a long time ago. Anyhow, uh, this has a flexible backing on it, and I think that's 60 grit right there. Uh, so I'll probably hit it with that, and then I'll go into the tumbler in 220 grit from, from that point on. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all the stuff, um, save myself a little bit of time leaning over this thing, trying to get every little part perfect uh, by just throwing it in the tumbler later. So that's the plan. Let's get started. Whenever you're working with rock dust, it's extremely important you wear a respirator. Um, rock dust in your lungs is really, really bad for you. Uh, I also have safety glasses. I wear earbuds uh, to protect my ears and entertain me a little bit because this is kind of boring to do. Uh, and uh, the rubber gloves, that's for when I use the water grinder. Uh, it's got electricity and water together, which makes me a little nervous. There's a GFI built into the cord, uh, but I like to use rubber gloves just an added uh, precaution against electrocution because that seems bad. So be careful. Alright, here's our rare so far. I've got that ridge knocked down right there, so it's pretty smooth across here. I took down the two bumps on the end here, so there's not that indentation in the middle, that's the real problem there. And I just hit a couple other little high spots around there. So I didn't do the whole rock at all. I may have to go back and do more, uh, but next I'm going to try this on there. This is flexible, gets in the little nooks and crannies a little bit better, and in the tumbler with smaller rocks and the ceramic media in there, um, that'll get around into the, some of those bigger indentations like this is concave. I don't have to worry about that because it's wide. If it's a little concave thing, then stuff doesn't get in there and rub against it. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with this one and we'll see how it looks and hopefully I don't have to go back a step. This is the first one of these rocks I've done all summer with the grinder uh, outside here. I've done everything else with tumblers and smaller stuff on the inside. I forgot how much more effective that, uh, that hard wheel is on this stuff than the soft wheels. So with that soft uh, back diamond wheel, I just hit this for a minute or so, uh, a couple minutes, and it, it's, it's not getting into any of the low spots at all. It would eventually, but to go over the whole rock with that is going to be pretty slow. So I'm going to go back to the hard wheel. I'm going to do the entire outer surface of that, this and then see how it looks and decide what to do from there. Well, that just took a couple minutes and I've gone over the entire rock. So there's still some bumps and nicks and stuff, but uh, I think that's going to save me a lot of time uh, with the next stage. So from here on out, I'm doing it with this machine again with the water hooked up to it.
well, that was much better. Uh, I've done the whole thing now. Uh, my initial plan was to put this right in 220 grit at this point, but I've got a lot of little ridges and stuff along here, which if I worked on this for a lot longer, I could get them out, but there's like a little ridge right there um, where it, I sanded this way and then sanded that way, and it leaves kind of a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do now is take this and put it in uh, coarse grit, 4670 grit for a week, and that'll take all those off, and any, any little nicks that I missed, it'll get those, and then it'll be very ready to go into 220 grit um, for the next week. So this is going to spend about five or six weeks in the tumbler at this point. So uh, that's the next step. This is a 12 pound tumbling barrel and I'm going to put the rock right in the middle there and I still have an inch or two above the rock and an uh, inch or two around the rock on each side and I've got a box of rocks here uh, that are some of them are partially tumbled some I actually cut up to make them a little smaller um, that's about as big as they get. I would like to have smaller rocks than these, but I just didn't have really any small rocks. So I'm going to put these in around this, and I'm kind of holding this in the middle. I don't know if this matters that much, but my thought is if it's in the middle and all the smaller rocks kind of move around the outside of it, hopefully that'll move it out a little bit. Hoping to get this done in one week in this stage, and then move it on to the other stage to actually polish it up. All right, so it's kind of standing in the middle right now, and I'm just going to fill in around it. So it looks like that. It's about two-thirds full, maybe. And I got a, a couple inches on top of it there, two or three inches on the top. And I'm um, going to throw that on the tumbler, and uh, we'll check in on it in a week. Hey, I thought I'd just check in and tell you how things are going here. Uh, this rock has been in coarse grind for two weeks now. After one week, I didn't think it looked good enough, so I threw it in for a second week. Uh, today, when I opened up, there were a couple little spalls here, like real shallow fractures. So I took that outside and ground it out with that grinder again. And here, there's a big crack, and I didn't get it all the way out, but it's a lot better than it was, so I ground on that. And you can see the difference here between this is from the tumbler, uh, and then uh, this is where I did the extra grinding on it. So I'm going to move this to 220 grit. I think 220 is going to be enough to take out this, this more, you know, less polished part here. Um, I think being in there for a week or a week and a half will be just fine. Um, so I'm going to just go for it. If it doesn't take it out after a week, I'm pretty sure it'll take it out after two weeks. So I don't think there's a big advantage to putting it in coarse grit again. So I'm going to put this in the barrel here. And instead of using other rocks, I'm going to use ceramic media. So I have some uh, small sorry, large ceramic media here, and then this is large and small mixed together. Uh, so I'm going to start with the big stuff and then throw in as much of that as I need. So I'm going to kind of hold this in the middle, so hopefully it stays kind of in the middle of the barrel. And I'm filling this to about two-thirds or three-quarters. Let's see what's going on in here. Ceramics flying all over the place. That should do it. Uh, so I'll put some water in there, put some grid in there, and we'll let it run for uh, a week or maybe a week and a half. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'll uh, probably check in with you then. Well, I ended up running this for two weeks instead of a week and a half like I planned. I just kind of got busy and forgot about it. Um, the nice thing about tumblers if you forget about it and let it go a little extra long, it doesn't hurt anything. So when I took it out, uh, I actually took it out of the tumbler two days ago, and there's a lot of ceramics in there, and I really wanted to make sure I got all the grit out, so I rinsed it pretty well. I took it outside and put it under the hose and rinsed, rinsed it off well that way. Uh, then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to throw it all back in the tumbler, put some water in there, I put a tablespoon of borax in there, and I let it run. My plan was to let it run for a few hours. Um, that was kind of in the evening, and I ended up going to bed and forgetting about it. And yesterday I was busy, so it ended up running for two days. Um, with just borax and whatever little grit was left in there. And when you run it with just a little tiny bit of grit like that, I've had this happen before, it ends up polishing the rock a little bit. So this is actually looking kind of shiny, um, and it's only been in 220 grit and then in borax with that little leftover grit for, for a couple of days, and it's getting shiny already. I could probably skip the 500 stage and go right to polish, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to carry on with the 500 stage next and uh, see how it goes. 
Um, one other thing, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to fill this thing up, uh, fill the barrel up with the rock and the ceramics. Uh, the ceramic level is way down from where it was. So this really, with this big rock and running that long with 220 grit, it really wore my ceramics down a lot. Uh, so I'll show you that just so you can see the difference and I'll add in some extra ceramics before I go to the next step. Okay, so you can see the ceramics are down uh, a fair amount. I'd like them up a little bit higher than that, like three quarters full, uh, at least two thirds full. I think I'm below that. So I'm just going to throw in a few more here. Get that level up. And yeah, maybe just a little bit more. That looks better. So that's where I want it. So it's going to go into 500 for probably a couple of weeks, at least one week, maybe two. We'll see how I feel about it. Uh, so I'll see you in a little bit. I ended up running this for about two weeks, uh, just a hair under, and then I put it back in the barrel with uh, a couple tablespoons of borax and ran it just overnight. Uh, so it's got a little bit of a shine on it again, like it did last week. It really doesn't look that much different. I think maybe a little bit more shine on it. It did not have this shine until I ran it overnight with the borax. Um, so what that does, I think, I don't think it's a borax that shines it up. I think it's that little bit of grit that's left in there. It's a little finer and just run it with just that tiny bit of grit. Um, kind of acts like a polish, I think. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to put it back in uh, for two more weeks with polish. I'm um, using an aluminum oxide polish and then it should be done. It's all finished. So uh, let's take a little closer look at it. So let's start looking at uh, this side. This is epidote in here. This is the part I knew was going to polish up the best, and it did. Uh, it's got a really nice shine on it. And then over in here we've got the feldspar that's more of a granite looking rock. And you can see there's some undercutting there um, where there's the gray spots. That, that mineral there, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but it's softer than the other minerals. So it wears away more, so you get a little bit of pitting in there. I don't know if you can see it, maybe like that. And where it's pitted, it also doesn't shine up very well because softer minerals don't polish as easily as harder minerals. So there is some undercutting, but on the plus side, there's this really cool white band all the way around it. Especially on this side, it's a little thicker. All the way around here. So I, I assume that's quartz in there. Here's the other side. Once again, you got a little bit of undercutting here, but it's not real bad. I was, I was fearful that it might be worse than that. And this is the crack that I partially ground out. I knew I didn't get the whole thing because I just don't know how deep that goes. So I just said, oh, that's probably good enough. And it's not too bad. I don't think it detracts from the stone very much. Uh, it's much better than it was before I went back and ground that out. So there it is. Biggest rock I've ever tumbled. The next biggest was a banded shirt um, that was probably about half this size. Uh, so kind of a new accomplishment for me. Kind of fun. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.